Welcome to the Astrology and Spirituality Show for week commencing the 15th of November. Thank you so much for joining us. All your lovely comments on last week's show, your suggestions for the words of the week, and also your entries into the birthday free prize draw competition. Now we had two winners for that, so we've had to make a choice, but the runner-up is Mary Midkiff. And Mary, you will get a free 12-month forecast, which I'll send to you later today. But the winner is Jane, uh, Jane M, because I'm going to obviously uh, share your information on, on the screen, Jane. So we need to be a little bit more cautious about your identity, but you are the winner and I'll go into that shortly. But this is a week when there really is a, such a huge amount of Scorpio energy washing around. But then, of course, we have the lunar eclipse in Taurus on Friday. This is particularly significant because it's the start of a new eclipse series, which is going to dominate next year's proceedings. We're going to have two in Taurus next year and two in Scorpio. So we're moving away from the Sagittarius and Gemini eclipse series, but there is still one more uh, eclipse to occur in that, and that's the Sagittarius solar, total solar eclipse of the 4th of December. Now, if you've yet to watch my lunar eclipse special deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. But this week, we do have a glorious lineup of the Sun, the ruler traditionally of, of Scorpio, of Mars, but also Mercury, all in uh, the sign of transformation, Scorpio. And Scorpio is obviously about diving deep. Now, Venus and Mars are forging a very enabling alliance. So if you're lucky enough to be working on something in a business context, a property context that's working well, or it is a relationship where there's a deep, rather intense attraction between you and the other person, things can really go forwards in a very special way. But it is true that Mars is in an opposition with Uranus this week. And Uranus is going to be very close to that lunar eclipse. So a lot of electric energy. And I think we are going to see more revelations in terms of uh, dishonesty, in terms of people in public positions. Pluto, the planet of transformation, the modern higher octave ruler of Scorpio, is going to tease out into the open all through December more secrets in its conjunction with Venus. So we've got uh, much more revelations to be coming uh, into the open and some of these could be to do with sexual impropriety as well. But in terms of marshalling our energies around that lunar eclipse, it's really about balancing the ins and outgoings in our situation between those everyday costs, which is Taurus, and those longer term considerations, Scorpio. But that's just the material plane. What about the spiritual, emotional plane? Well, of course, the uh, energies of Taurus are influenced by Venus, and Venus is very prominent this week anyway. So it is about enjoying consuming nice things, whether it's a little bit of posh or luxury with Taurus, or it's going more aesthetic and eating natural or organic vegetables. On the other side of the heavens, Scorpio is always asking us to balance up our desire in some way against the cost. And also we could say that the polarity between these two signs is about how we balance what we want for ourselves, which I think is Taurus, against how it will impact on another person. Now that could be around sex, it could be around intimacy, as much as deep diving and understanding the mysteries of life or our deeper motivations, where we may feel insecure, jealous, possessive, controlling, all those very dark energies that can be the lower pulse of Scorpio. So that's the big news for this week. What about that hermetic wheel? Wow, what a jump out week that is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so we'll pop the hermetic wheel on the screen and have a look what's going on in the uh, realm of the tarot this week. We are in the Seven of Cups energy all week long. Last week we touched upon how the Seven of Cups can be about choices and having lots of different things to choose from. It can be a card of illusion and dreamy-like uh, state as well. You know, 
if, for example, say we want to set up a business and we have a lot of skills, we're great at painting, we're a good listener, um, and we can do a bit of joinery. You know, we don't know what field to go into. Do we want to go into counselling? Do we want to go into creative arts? Do we want to do something more practical? And it's just weighing up all of our skills and talents. We don't have to make a choice straight away. There's a lot going on in our minds, but I think as the week comes to a close, things will become a bit more clearer uh, when we move into the Eight of Cups territory next week. And it's interesting because Eight Energy in astrology, or the Eighth House, is obviously very Scorpionic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So perhaps with thinking about those potential choices, because we're always thinking about something in terms of a choice, even if it's what we're going to have for dinner in the mm -hmm. evening, what we're going to wear each day. You know, what are the goals that we're going to pursue short term or the longer term objectives? So we're always thinking about choices. But I think that Scorpionic, Scorpionic energy in competition with the Taurus energy, with the more, if you like, anchoring energies of Capricorn there in the guise of Venus and Pluto, are just asking us to think about what the ramifications are from those choices, whether it's spiritual. Uh, in, in terms of a close connection or it is in terms of money. Mm -hmm. Now we've had uh, quite a few words of the week uh, entered but I think we've gone for... Yeah we've uh, chosen your word Catherine which was adventure. I loved it because it's a bit lighter than some of the other words we've been looking at. Not that it's not as important it really is and that's you know why we've chosen it and did Catherine not also say because of the confines of COVID-19 restrictions right. you know how is it playing out around adventure mm -hmm. I think it's a brilliant concept and Fantastic. again we had some lovely suggestions uh, so thank you so much for those so what's your take on adventure I think with COVID you know, if we are a more adventurous person, or even if we're a more solitary person, we, our choices in a lot of ways have been taken away from us. Around last physical week, travel. Around physical travel. So I think a lot of us have been adventuring more in our minds, you know, using our imagination to not just think what we want our future to be, but maybe just daydreaming or fantasizing about different options in our life. We can have that adventure in our mind, even if we're not physically able That's to do fantastic. so. That's fantastic. And, and perhaps the adventures come as in that we've had to become more dexterous and more adaptable in trying to make our lives more varied. So it's not just the same routine. And I always feel for people who live on their own the most. This is because partly I've had the experience of living on my own and it was something that I was extraordinarily happy with for a very, very long time. But living on your own does provide some challenges and isolation I think has been one of the biggest problems with the COVID restrictions. So it's not quite so easy to reinvent things and do things in a different way if you don't have any close associations there or perhaps the people that you're closer to live further away mm -hmm. or overseas or um, you're not able to meet them because of staying safe. So yeah. I think people who live on their own have found perhaps the limitation of the restrictions especially difficult. Now, of course, it could be argued that those that are all together in one house are on top of each other a lot more because they're not going out and going on holidays or going to work or traveling away on business. So there's more confinement, which limits that adventure and causes a lot of frustration and irritation. No one's had it easy through COVID. No. Um, so um, I think the adventure could be that if we're a born again couch potato, rather like I am, maybe the adventure is that I'm gonna get my running shoes on again, even though I've got the rheumatoid arthritis and obviously I have treatment for it. But one of the things I've noticed whenever we walk quite quickly is I do have a lot of stiffness in my uh, hip still, even though uh, the rest of my body is so much better. So the adventure for me, I think, is once we get round the very busy part of the year for astrologers, Christmas, is going to be to try to start running again. So uh, adventure can be short, explosive activities. So it could be on a bike, it could be mm. cycling, it could be doing some exercise in the comfort of our home, watching a YouTube channel, or um, you know, finding one of those old CDs uh, or videos that you get in charity shops and putting on and, and a keep, keep fit out oh, uh, yeah, uh, sort of uh, routine that can inspire us. Yeah. 
But of course, the other thing of is higher education, mm -hmm. which is also governed by the ninth house of Sagittarius, which is very much about adventure. So, mm -hmm. a great opportunity to, you know, push ourselves into into trying out different ways of learning or gaining new uh, insights into the situation by being more adventurous in terms of our thinking and not letting our um, thinking be self-defeating in terms of, well, I was always told at school I was never very bright, I was never very academic. We'll push outside of that. That would be a great piece of adventurism. But obviously if you are someone who really, really wants to fly off to somewhere for some winter sun or winter snow, and it's safe to do so in the territory, state or country that you live in, that might be your way of gaining some adventure yeah. this week. I feel also though, I'd just like to add that, you know, sometimes we can feel like, be a bit hard on ourselves, like we're not being adventurous enough. You know, we can look on social media and see other people doing stuff and That's then a brilliant berate point. ourselves saying, oh, well, I'm, you know, boring. I don't go here, there and everywhere. But I if you're a home this. lover. Exactly. You know, let's not compare ourselves to other people's adventures because that gets us in, in quite a, a bad, can be a bad way of thinking. So we're all having our own little adventures through our life purpose and our life. And, and that's a great... Oh, that's adventure. an absolutely yeah, fantastic uh, 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 insight into the way that we can think ourselves down. So I love that. So now we're going to have the modality of the week. So what cards are you going for this week? Well, this week um, I've chosen the Archangel Gabriel cards. Archangel Gabriel is said to be the energetic, uh, you know, angelic uh, energy of communication. And I thought that might be good for us this week. So they're beautiful... Um, cards they're very sort of like what you would see in a church window quite you know a bit old-fashioned bit traditional but lovely love that right. with Mars opposite Uranus this week do not either be surprised if you do feel or if I feel uh, uh, restless someone's written to me this morning saying that they felt quite on edge and Uranus of course is a, is a lot to do with this particularly if you're a Gemini person you know, because although it's not on the angle of the fixed sign, so it's not uh, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius or Taurus, which obviously if you have planets in those uh, signs, uh, in those uh, zodiac signs, whether it is your sun, your ascendant, your moon or something else, they could be agitated very strongly by Uranus. But because Uranus is in the 12th solar house for Geminis, I think Geminis have really gone through it a bit, particularly with Saturn squaring up with Uranus. So, what's right. the card then? Okay. Da, 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 da. It da, says, da, da. share your art with the world. This so ties into what we were talking about earlier as well. It says, it's time to allow others to enjoy your creative work. This could be a physical piece of art. You know, so an installation, an installation, or it could be um, some sort of interpretive dance, or just something that we're good at. Well, Have I'm, we been hiding our light under? Well, a I'm going to share a piece of art that you uh, created an installation earlier this year. I got a message on my phone. Uh, there's water running all over the kitchen. Come quickly! <laughs> so when anyway, I ran downstairs, and Alicia had got about four different running shoes and put bottles of water in them. <laughs> water that. running all over the kitchen. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Indeed. So that was actually a bit like an art installation. Oh, I you. must say we do try to avoid using small plastic bottles yes. at all times. Yes. In this house we don't have a water filter on the tap, uh, but we did in our old yeah. house. We reuse the bottles that we, we do have, don't we? But we also have a chalkboard in the kitchen and every day uh, we'll write a new message to each other on the chalkboard and it's quite cute. But we've had the same message on the chalkboard for about a week because it was so fun that I haven't had the heart to rub it off. So the idea is that, um, you know you get these little thimbles that you put on your finger for sewing, um, and um, so we were in, I forget where it was, where it was a charity shop or whatever, but they had a whole box of these small thimbles. Anyway, the concept came up to me that there could be these little sweet creatures called thimble weeds. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so we've both got our private names for thimbleweeds now. Yes. What am I? Um, you're grumbleweed. I'm grumbleweed. Thank you. And I'm fumbleweed. Fumbleweed, because Elisa is. <laughs> Fun. 
again. <laughs> <laughs> fun or fumble? <laughs> fumble, more like, yeah. Fumble. So, a little bit of fun with that. That was our, <laughs> our installations. Yes. Right. Without further ado, we've got Jane M's winning uh, birth chart and solar return. Now, I have to say, I haven't looked at these at all, apart from... Uh, working out where the midpoint between the sun and the moon is in both charts. So just bear with me, please, as I don my spectacles. Apologies for any reflection. Uh, right, so Jane, your natal chart. So you have, of course, a Scorpio sun. And it's at 27 degrees uh, in the third house. And so... That gives you an ability to be very agile in your thinking, but also have depth in your thinking. But you've actually got a, a huge plethora of influences also in the sign of Sagittarius. So you've got Mercury, okay, technically in detriment. Black Moon Lilith in the third house. So you need a lot of mental stimulation. But you've also got Mars and Venus in almost an exact conjunction in the sign of Sagittarius. There's literally only four minutes between the two of them. So that's absolutely incredible. So they're in the fourth house, but also your midpoint is in Sagittarius at 23 degrees. So this is the point between the moon, which you have, which is in its detriment in Capricorn at, uh, at 19 degrees 58. So just under 20 degrees, but it's in the fourth house. You have the moon in the fourth house is a good place to be, a technical detriment with the moon in Capricorn because obviously it's opposite uh, the ruling planets uh, the moon governs, which is Cancer. So a lot of fourth house energy. So your home and environment, I think with Venus and Mars conjoining there, is going to be your passion. And also you have your Sagittarius midpoint between the Sun at 27 degrees Scorpio and the Moon at 19 degrees Capricorn. But ironically, you also have Saturn in the fifth house in Aquarius. So you're going to have your Saturn return next year beginning. So that's going to be interesting. Your Chiron's in the sixth house. I think you may have a lot of knowledge about health and fitness and have a love of pets or animals. Um, you also have your vertex, which is a critical point in astrology, quite close to your Chiron. So important to make sure that you look after your own organisation and a structure in life, as well as obviously being very caring to others. You do have Jupiter in the sign of Aries. So you're going to have a Jupiter return later in 2022, and it's in the seventh house. So that could be good for a relationship. But let's just wind back. So you have Neptune squaring Saturn in your natal horoscope. And Neptune is in Scorpio and it is in the third house. So I think at times Neptune squaring uh, uh, Saturn can lead to feeling a bit drained at times. And sometimes feeling a bit overwhelmed and depleted. So very, very important to look after your sensory uh, energies because I think having all that fourth house gives you a great deal of sensitivity very caring person but you also have Pluto very close to your uh, first house but it is in the 12th so I think you're someone who has a deep perspective on life with that 12th house energy the fourth house energy but all that Scorpio so you're thinking and discussing deep so I think that's really uh, where you are. Your north node, your direction of travel in a more spiritual context, means that it is in the 10th house. So perhaps you have had responsibilities in your life or been a leader of some kind. But I think that combination between Mars and Venus in Sagittarius in the 4th house is quite paradoxical because Mars in Sagittarius is very athletic Venus being there as well, it, you know, it's pushing you to, to, to explore and yet they're in the fourth house, which is very much home orientated. So I think there's probably been um, some paradoxical phases of your life where you may, especially when you were younger, have been quite an active person. But I think as time's gone on, you've probably 
chosen your home and your environment as being the things that really define you as you've got older. But I think you probably were a lot more sociable when you were younger. Now, in terms of uh, this year's solar return, the midpoint's at two degrees in Virgo. And let's just have a look. So you've got a terrific link between Mars and Venus, which of course is going on this week. And in fact, your Venus, Pluto, Eros, which is how your love over this coming year, are all uh, in the sign of Capricorn, but in the fourth house. And because Pluto, therefore, is right on top of your Eros in the fourth house, and Saturn's there as well, are you thinking about moving, Jane? Or are you um, doing some repairs or improvements to your property or where you live? It really wouldn't be a surprise. The moon, however, is in the very bubbly Gemini in the ninth house. In fact, you have Black Moon, Lilith, Ceres, the moon, the North Node, all clustered together in the ninth house in Gemini. So your desire to broaden your thinking, and it could be through higher education, is going to be very strong this year. But the sun did return back to your uh, place of birth, 27 degrees 59, uh, one day earlier, or does return one day earlier this year. So having, like we have this week, Mars, Mercury and the Sun, all in Scorpio, but in your case, in the second house. So I think getting those foundations right, it could be something to do with property improvement, working from home, some kind of transformation around your home, emotional or family life. Could be quite exciting for you. But you do have the Sun, in a square with Jupiter. But you know, that's really quite a lovely aspect because it can make us very generous and thoughtful to those who are less fortunate. But it also points towards, perhaps at times, having a few treats over the next year, splashing out and being, you know, very kindly or supportive to those who are at the center of your world, those loved ones. So I hope that makes sense to you, Jane. Thank you so much for entering. Thank you too to Mary. I'm sorry you missed out, Mary, but you will have received your 12-month, three 12-month forecast by the time you read, uh, you watch this. Now, if you'd like to enter your birthday details for week commencing the 22nd of November through to the 28th, please do, or a word of the week or a question that you'd like us to discuss, please drop it down underneath this video on YouTube. Thank you so much for all your subscriptions. Thank you so much for our patrons. We're sorry we've not been in touch as much as we've liked. We're really, really juggling quite a few different things, which we can't quite uh, disclose all of those things at the moment because we don't quite know for sure. But change is going on top of change. <laughs> and uh, uh, hopefully we can create, uh, give you an update very, very soon. Uh, but we've had to support other family members with various health issues as well. So, where are we up to now then? I'd just like to also add that last week uh, I forgot to do the Asteroid of the Week and I'm so, oh. so sorry. So this week we're going to be exploring the Asteroid Juno. So if you want to read that blog post... Juno, I really Juno. like that Asteroid. <laughs> Juno, not a lot of people know that. Juno, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, so if you want to have a read of Very that... Very predictable, for, especially for an astrologer. <laughs> that blog post is in the link uh, down beneath this video. In the so Juno box. is the Asteroid of Relating. So we're, knowing where that is in a, a personal horoscope is very, very important. Uh, so, great, thank you so much. So from Mrs. A and from myself, it is uh, wishing you a great week. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's goodbye from- Me? And it's goodbye <laughs> from her. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>